they win the Darwin Award. And so I guess it's, it's, it's natural selection. They're idiots. They're not meant to go on. But if Americans put up with the Carnegie and Ford and Rockefeller Foundation, along with the Open Society Foundation of George Soros, to fund radical Islam's takeover of Europe, to fund collapsing Latin America into the United States, if we put up with the most dramatic footage you've ever seen that we're going to be playing for TV viewers, breaking down for radio listeners, uh, coming up in the next segment, I mean, you had tens of thousands of people UN funded smash over the Guatemala Mexico border. The New York Times, the Washington Post were still reporting, oh, it's a couple hundred. Now they're saying it's 5,000. It's 100,000. It's 200,000. It looks like two or three NFL football games let out. Notice I was saying Friday and yesterday it's five to 10,000. They were saying that it was 200. No, if you put that image back up from drudgereport.com, 200 would be the first 100 feet, not the five miles behind them. And the truth is it's a big giant stream behind them. And the UN runs the world refugee program in every major nation but the US who pulled out of it last year. So they're directing this as a political weapon. And as soon as they get here, they're given voter registration cards, they're given absentee ballots, and it's in the Dallas TV and the Houston TV, and, and it's in the national television out, out of Denver, all the battleground states. They are sitting there, and they are sending the illegal aliens absentee ballots so they can vote, and that's the globalist secret weapon. So... I've been up since 9 a.m. getting this broadcast ready for you. And when we come back, we've got the footage, not just of yesterday when they tore down the fences and rampaged through, but the new footage of marching into Mexico towards Texas, towards California, towards Arizona, towards New Mexico. It's all coming up on the other side. And the big fact that the president... You heard it here first, just like you've heard so many things here first. That's what scares the Democrats and Soros and the globalists. They know we're jacked into the zeitgeist that Trump is looking at the tax exemption of NGOs and of these big tax-free foundations, and Trump is looking at cutting U.N. funding, not just pulling out of the U.N. compact on migration and borders, which puts the U.N. over your borders. He did that last year. Now Italy and Austria and Hungary are pulling out. That's leadership but that Trump is looking to actually cut UN funding or maybe even go further because it's a globalist anti-American organization with a bunch of third world dictators running it, allied with big Fortune 100 companies that don't want nation states. They don't want freedom. They want to absorb the nation states in a giant vertical integration, which means ending your basic freedom, your basic future. So it's all coming up. Now, I spent... All day on the special report we're going to air when we come back. World history, a referendum on nationalism, on success, on free market, on Christianity, on the West, the Renaissance versus the worldwide corporate takeover allied with radical Islam, the Chai Coms, and what's left of the Nazi operation, Juncker and the EU. Thank you so much for joining us today on this live Global Sunday transmission. The United Nations publicly has control of over 160 nations' borders via treaties that they control immigration and that they control naturalization and that they control migrants. And then they've said now no borders exist. No one's allowed to have borders. But the UN has borders around its buildings. The Vatican has borders around its buildings. And now they have come out and had hundreds of thousands of migrants conservatively mass in Venezuela and other areas and began marching out of northern South America in the last six months and telling the countries along the way, if you let them in, we will ship them to America and the UN pays the local politicians off. Yesterday, they smashed through Mexican defenses, through the border gates, through the fences and got in. 
Now the media is saying five to ten thousand. They were saying two hundred yesterday. So that misplaced the numbers like a hundred thousand. We said five to ten thousand. Now it looks like a hundred thousand. Looks like a whole bunch of NFL football games let out. And they're now smashing in viciously and waving foreign flags, Venezuelan flags, uh, Honduran flags. They say, we're coming. We want welfare. We're going to have anchor babies. They admittedly have child smugglers shipping children in with them. They admittedly are bringing drugs. And no one's going to stop them because they're God. When you fly in from Mexico or England or Canada, you're going to get asked questions. You're going to have to show ID, but not them. And as Pompeo, the Secretary of State, and Trump pointed out, they're being foreign funded. There's a World Net Daily article that shows all the major groups that are actually funding it. And it's the UN, it's Soros, it's the Ford Foundation. It's all coming up. It'll take two segments to play the report, but I want to air it here because it's so important. Then Tommy Robinson set to go to prison for exposing Islamic child kidnapping rings that were confirmed to be real. They've been convicted. But he is set to go to prison for contempt of court, exposing it to begin with. That hearing is coming up in a few days, and the military, uh, uh, wait till you hear about Soldier X and the insane story of Soldier X at the bottom of the hour. But let's start getting to this special report that is so critical that all of you watching on TV or listening on radio or watching at InfoWars.com, the full archive of this report I just shot hours ago is at InfoWars.com. President Trump is considering cutting funding to the U.N. in response to the U.N. fomenting this attack on our borders and our sovereignty, just like they've done in Europe. Here's the beginning of the censored report. Trump, no wall, no USA at all. No Trump, no wall. Extremism and defense of liberty is no vice to quote Barry Goldwater. The president must pull out of the U.N., he must seize that property. It is a criminal organization. If the president just continues to let them organize hundreds of millions of third world populations, the UN says they want 600 million in the US in their own plan by 2050. If we put up with that, we'll be fighting a losing battle as they stream up out of Central and South America into Mexico and into the United States. But I will seal off the border before they come into this country. And I'll bring out our military, not our reserves. I'll bring out our military. High-level White House and campaign sources have confirmed to InfoWars that President Trump has all options on the table to deal with the organized, concerted invasion of North America by the United Nations and multinational NGOs. Again, all options are on the table. Let's discuss those options and our national sovereignty's survival. Secretary of State Pompeo is on record. This is an organized invasion of the United States. We're going to break down who's organizing it, and we're going to break down how to stop it cold. Ladies and gentlemen, this is do or die time for America. This is the same globalist model they've already used to overrun Europe with third world populations that have been weaponized. This is America, two minutes to midnight. This is a group, a large group of people that are putting women and children in front of the caravan to use as shields as they make their way through. It's Sunday, October 21st, 2018, and the United States is under foreign, multinational, corporate UN attack. This is 21st century warfare, and President Trump must act. And I can tell you from past statements from the president and sources close to the president that he is preparing to pull us out of the United Nations. He pulled us out of the treaty last year that for over two decades had put you in control over our immigration policy and over, quote, refugees. We see in Europe, in Italy, and in Austria, and in Hungary, they are pulling out of the compacts following the United States because the UN actually goes in and destabilizes these third world countries, then organizes the migrant waves and has them leapfrog up through Central and South America into the United States, and the same thing in the Middle East and North Africa into Europe. In fact, the dictator of Turkey has threatened to open up even more migration if the EU doesn't submit to him and basically go under Islamic control. This is 21st century warfare using giant weaponized third world populations to invade. But here's the big news I'm going to break down in a moment. The president has a way to stop this dead in its tracks. 
We've already got 35 million illegal aliens in this country that have come in the last few decades. We've already basically run a white flag up. And Trump is saying no to surrender now. So what does the UN do? They organize millions of people and prepare them to create open lanes to invade the United States. And what does the left do here in the United States? All this invasion force builds up and just smash through the Mexican border out of Guatemala yesterday? I'll tell you what they do. <laughs> No borders, no walls, no ice. And the control corporate media shows an image of Trump looking over the poor little girl and taking her away from her mommy, which never happened. You have hundreds of thousands of people a month trying to pour across, many of them making it, many of them children unattended. And under Obama, they would just give the children over to, quote, aid groups that turned out to be child traffickers. But that's a side issue compared to what's behind this. The UN, the major foundations, the Rockefeller, the Ford, the Carnegie, uh, Soros' foundations publicly fund all this. And the New York Times, the Washington Post, in the last few days said a couple hundred migrants came up to the border and, oh, the police were mean to them. But now we know it's over 10,000. It's over 5,000 that made it across in two different groups. And they're beating up and attacking the police and using children as shields, something that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo exposed. This organized invasion, hiding in plain view, should be the number one story in the United States. But instead, it's a side issue in the corporate media. The controlled media makes fun of Trump that he's making a big deal about it. Think about the archetypal images like a dam opening its floodgates uh, and flooding the countryside, like just happened here in Austin, Texas last week. But instead, it's people carrying children at their front as human shields and saying, our countries are lawless hellholes of corruption and, and child trafficking. And so because we're fleeing all this tyranny, we're going to bring it to you. And we're funded by the United Nations that controls these nations and has helped destabilize them, who is then weaponizing it to use it against the first world. President Trump must act with executive orders, putting the military on the border to block this, and he signaled that he will. But more importantly, we can't just pull out of the fraudulent UN migration compact, giving them control over our immigration and who can come into the nation as refugees. We've already done that. President Trump has to signal pulling all funding from the United Nations, and as long as it acts as a criminal organization and a criminal group organizing the overthrow of our borders. All right, we'll be right back with how to defeat these people. It's popular, it's constitutional, it's common sense. We have the will, and it's going to happen. The only reason we get this information out is because of you. Why are we the most banned, most lied about, most demonized broadcast? Because we do our research. We have the facts. So let's conclude this report, and I'll get to the big exclusive out of the EU globalist takeover with Tommy Robinson and the rest of it, and, and, and the big breaking exclusive news about Soldier X, the new greatest threat to the NWO. Next segment. But right now, let's go back to the breakdown report. The full report is on Infowars.com right now where you can go see it for yourself, see all the articles, the bibliography, dealing with the fact that Trump is looking at pulling out of the U.N. entirely, not just cutting funding if they continue uh, to try to destroy national sovereignty. Here's the rest of the report. Compact, giving them control over our immigration and who can come into the nation as refugees. We've already done that. President Trump has to signal pulling all funding from the United Nations, and as long as it acts as a criminal organization and a criminal group organizing the overthrow of our borders, our sovereignty, and our nation with these giant third world weaponized populations that the leftists and the UN control, as long as that's happening, then I say the president sees the United Nations in New York City. The Rockefellers paid for the damn thing. It's on U.S. land. They're flooding us. They're conquering us. How about we put the 60-plus thousand homeless people that are in New York City inside the caviar posh halls of the U.N.? But don't hold your breath. The Vatican has 200-foot walls, but the Pope says he gets sick in his stomach hearing about Christian roots of Europe, and the borders need to be opened up. 
but he doesn't take one person inside of the Vatican, even though Italy has over a million illegals from North Africa alone, huge crime rates, plunging uh, amount of people coming for tourism. And it's the same thing in Germany and the same thing in Sweden and the 90 plus percent of the rapes by the Islamic illegal aliens. And now they're pulling the same scam here. Thousands and thousands of the illegals made it across the International Bridge yesterday. The police in Mexico capitulated. And now the U.N.'s coming in as the savior to set up refugee camps in Mexico, which they'll use to train and fund and prepare the even larger uh, migrant wave from Mexico, combining with the others out of Central and South America, to then flood into the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 21st century military attack. No Trump, no wall, no USA at all. The globalists want a permanent underclass from third world nations that they historically have already had control of. We're talking about nations with crime rates 10, 15 times higher than America's worst cities. We're talking about places where corruption is just accepted where the people have been totally poor for generation after generation. And when you watch these illegal aliens waving their foreign flags, holding some of their babies up as human shields, what are they saying? They're saying, we're fleeing violence, we're fleeing corruption, we can't live in the hellhole of Central and South America and all the communist and authoritarian regimes. Exactly. And then you're led by leftist groups and authoritarian UN coming into America to create the exact same thing. And that's why. It's not just illegal. It's not just a lot of child trafficking. They haven't just caught these groups trafficking children. They haven't just caught them bringing in drugs. They are part of a criminal takeover and come from cultures that we know are failed. Period. And that's why it's so critical to stop this deluge of humans. They have to fix the countries they're in. They have to kick the UN out, not take us over and bring the globalist UN IMF World Bank system here. The floodgates are being opened. Trump is standing against it. Will America and the rest of the world stand against it? Because this is an exact program we've already seen carried out in Europe. And don't think that we haven't already let over 30 million illegal aliens into this country. Now they just want to turn up the heat with 600 million in official UN plans. Macron wants 200 million North Africans in the next few decades to come into France and Europe. They're the ones saying this. It's simply incredible. This is a military attack, but it's not being announced as such. They just open the floodgates, our media acts as PR to cover up for it, and thinks that you'll sit there not aware of what's going on. What I'm saying is not radical. The UN publicly has organized the Islamic invasion of over 15 million people into Europe with their little refugee centers where they recruit and fund the invasion. And now... We have the same scenario unfolding with the very same players from the U.N. and big tax-free foundations mounting an invasion that just smashed through the Mexican border, and now they're establishing U.N. bases in Mexico to mount the full assault on the United States. And the controlled corporate media is there as a client, suppressing the public, playing down the numbers, saying the police were bad, and the illegal aliens attacking them and using their babies as shields are the good guys. This is the globalist corporate media literally working against the American people. And so now it's time for the president to cut all the funding out of the U.N. and to nationalize the United Nations building in New York and put the 60 plus thousand uh, people that are homeless, many of them illegals, inside the U.N. building. Oh, that's an assault on the U.N. Well, what is it when the U.N. organizes these groups in third world countries and say you're going to America where everything's free and there's welfare and we're going to vote socialist and we're going to mail you absentee ballots in the mail, which has been confirmed? Think about this. This is not radical. Extremism and defense of liberty is no vice to quote Barry Goldwater. The president must pull out of the U.N. He must seize that property. It is a criminal organization. If the president just continues to let them organize hundreds of millions of third world populations, the U.N. says they want 600 million in the U.S. in their own plan by 2050. If we put up with that, we'll be fighting a losing battle as they stream up out of Central and South America into Mexico and into the United States. We have to cut the head off of the snake and we have to stop funding the globalist United Nations that is the enemy of humanity and has proven with all the child sex trafficking and all the corruption that it absolutely is a cancer on the face of this world. The United Nations and the global corporations that control it have declared war on the nation state. They've already conquered Europe 
and now they're in the process of flooding North America with tens of millions of illegal aliens they control. It's now time for Trump to understand these third world weaponized populations are part of a larger globalist plan and cut the funding from the UN and seize their property at the Presidio in San Francisco and at the big Rockefeller complex in New York City. It is a globalist enemy structure that has declared war on our country and its weapons are the migration systems they control, opening up these huge routes to destroy our sovereignty and our borders and bankrupt our country. It's do or die time for America. And we're going to break down the solutions to save this republic from the cancer that is the robber baron controlled United Nations. Build the wall. Build the wall. Build the wall. Build the wall. We weren't facing total satanic globalism allied with radical Islam. Now, Tommy Robinson is undoubtedly the most famous nationalist in the world. You could say I'm the most famous challenger of reality and the most demonized, most censored person in the world. But Tommy Robinson is a guy that 11, 12 years ago was running a tanning salon in his town, a successful middle-class guy, getting married with children, and saw Islamists putting little girls in cars for sex slavery. And he blew the whistle. And a decade later, it came out he was right. And then if six months ago or so, he's covering a trial. They were convicted of thousands of girls recruited into sex slavery. And the judge said, I call it contempt in court that you even covered the trial. So they put him in jail for a few months. He lost 40-something pounds. And the media, you know, oh, he loves to be arrested. He loves to be in prison. He deserves it. You know, he's made $50 billion off this. All of it's lies. All of it's fraud. All of it's, you know, made up uh, anonymous sources, the same ones that say the lies about me. And now he's in Germany giving speeches tonight. His children are sleeping in the room next to him. He's with us for two segments. But he's here to talk about the next level of this. Now, we'll show the selfie in a minute and go right to Tommy Robinson. There he is right there, folks, for TV viewers. This guy's amazing talking George Washington 2.0. He is at a gas station. I'll tell you the story. We'll show you the, the, the selfie. And he runs into a military individual who wants a selfie. That person got drummed out. Then they told the military, you don't support Tommy Robinson. And again, we're going to get him back on Skype. But Skype just cut out. We, you know, we just had him. And you think about all the things he's gone through and what's happened. So now it's jumped the shark. Now there are thousands of photos all over the Internet of whole uh, platoons and whole squads of the military, not just with Tommy, but saying, we support Tommy Robinson and British soldiers who've been totally cut off. I'm a soldier X. They can't discharge us all. So I'm going to play a little promo video. This is exclusive here. And there's so much. But, Tommy, this is so exciting. This is history happening. Thanks for joining us. What you're basically seeing is mutiny from the British Armed Forces. You've seen one young gentleman, in fact, probably a hundred young gentlemen who had their photo taken with us at a service station. Bear in mind, one of them was discharged, or he was told he was being discharged, but he's still currently on an army barracks now, so they haven't yet gone through with that decision. He was being discharged for uploading a selfie with a photograph of me on his social media. Now, the reason he was discharged was because the Muslim Council of Britain put in a complaint to the British Army. Now, the Muslim Council of Britain, just a number of years ago, signed a declaration stating that British Armed Forces were legitimate targets for suicide bombings in Iraq. So that's who our armed forces are now pandering to. We have a imam advisor to our armed services, who said that no far-right fascist ideology would be tolerated. There was no far-right fascist ideology. There was simply a young man, a young gentleman, who was willing to sacrifice his life, who was willing to give his life to fight in faraway fields for freedom and democracy, but yet he's not even allowed that same freedom to decide who he can have a photograph taken with. That's all he done was a photograph. So the army made the decision that they're going to discharge him we then started a campaign. We've called him Soldier X because he's only a 17-year-old young lad. And before I knew it, I was being inundated with photographs of, of army personnel holding up signs. Started off in Britain. It's now gone all around the world. 
every regiment from captains. Um, I've spoke to corporals. We spoke to every regiment across Britain. We spoke to spoke to. I've spoke to a captain ser serving out of Sudan. I spoke to people who are so angered, so frustrated that they want to show solidarity with Soldier X. Now, what that's then grown into is I've received phone call after phone call after phone call. I've spent the last seven days travelling Britain, meeting with our army personnel, which is, I believe, the video that you've got, you've got segments of. We're going to show in a moment. I've met soldiers across the country. And, Alex, I'm already, I've always been terrified of the situation our country is in. After meeting these armed personnel across the country, our whole country needs to be worried. The, the morale in our British armed forces is the lowest it could ever have been. People feel used, abused. They don't want to fight for the current government or, or, or their goals or their agenda. They feel... I spoke to members of the armed forces who said the only way you can get promoted is if you're a mixed-race lesbian. The diversity that's been shoved down our throats, the inclusion, the flying of the rainbow flag by, by our army bases. Now, this isn't one soldier or two or 10 or 15 or even 20. This is hundreds and thousands of personnel in our country. And the point is, it's a globalist agenda to demoralize them being force-fed, and they recognize it. <laughs> they recognize it, and they are fed up. And I've had unit after unit after unit tell me that if we went to war tomorrow, half of them would leave. They'd walk. And I've got, which I'll bring to you over the next few days, videos and interviews of armed personnel after armed personnel saying exactly this. When I started seeing this, this went way bigger than the original soldier. What it was about originally was members of our armed forces showing solidarity and showing that we don't leave a man behind, that we will not allow our... And that he's got a right to take a photo with you in a free country and put it up when you're a good person. You're not even a racist, but if you were, they have a right. You stand for freedom. You stand for sovereignty. They know what you've gone through. They recognize your sacrifice. And now it's already hashtag I am Soldier X. This is exploding, Tommy. You know, my friend, everything you touch is the zeitgeist. Like, I thought myself or Matt Drudge were in the zeitgeist or Donald Trump. Everything you touch is solid awakening, my friend. You're... Have you got the little idea the angels are flying around you? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Well, I, I, what I said now is the, the worrying thing is with these videos, with this show of support, you've got soldiers putting pictures up with their false limbs, with all of their drugs that they're on, with all of the mental disorders they have, with notes, say messages to the government, to the MOD saying thanks for the thanks for post-traumatic stress disorder, thanks for abandoning me, thanks for destroying me. The, some of these messages, Alex, if you go on my Facebook page, you can read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. No, I understand. And, and, and my answer to the 25 U.S. soldiers who commit suicide today, don't, you're not forgotten by the American people. Fight back against the globals politically. Don't kill yourself. But I understand the despair when your country and everything's turned over to evil and then you're treated like crap. In fact, I was reading... The British soldiers don't even get their lunches paid for. Their clothes, they are just totally abandoned. You've got to see, they're washing. They, they're their own clothes, they have to pay for them to be washed. They, 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 they're food. You've got to see the standard of food. What the British soldiers said is when they're out in Afghanistan and the Americans have their food hut, they just sit there looking and feeling so gutted and jealous because the Americans are eating real food. They're really provided by them, all free. The British soldiers are going in having to pay for everything, and it's disgusting. And, I mean, you have to see the videos and the images. And then the bath war, the drinking war, the facilities, the mould. You would not put refugees in these conditions in Britain. In fact, our armed forces in Britain have told me that their conditions are worse in Britain than they were in Afghanistan. Now, why? Why is this? Why are they abusing them? Why is why was the last military drive and the the last proceed the, the, the last campaign to get because the EU off? doesn't want a British military? No, it's clear they don't. They want a European. It's clear that they are purposely destroying the morale. You're being demoralized on purpose. Let's stay there and fight back for national sovereignty. Straight ahead, ladies and gentlemen, with Tommy Robinson.
I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. U.S., 15 million already poured into Europe. It's so insane. I can't believe we're on air even covering it. Tommy Robinson, ladies and gentlemen, is just a business owner, a patriot, who 12 years ago saw Islamic sex gangs setting up harems of kidnapped little kids. They've since had hundreds of trials, hundreds of busts, hundreds of convictions. He, he is hunted. They, they threatened to kill him and his family. He is a real hero. And he joins us right now, Tommy Robinson online. He's in Europe giving speeches. He just spent the last week all over England. After just a few weeks ago, he takes a photo at a gas station, petrol station with a, with, a, with a member of the military. He puts it up. The guy gets kicked out of the military. It causes a chain reaction. We're British. We're UK. We're Irish. We're, we're Scott. We have a right to free speech. And now Soldier X has exploded. So I want to speak to that. But he's in court Tuesday. He was already put in jail for almost three months, lost 40 pounds. Now he has his appeal. He's going back for covering an Islamic child kidnapping ring that was convicted. So we're going to talk about that in the next segment. But Tommy, getting into Soldier X in this little clip, it's an exclusive we're about to play. This is huge to hear from the British military, the UK military itself. This is huge. You, you don't hear this. I've tried to look back and see when anything like this has previously happened. It hasn't. This is, and this is only growing. I'm getting contacted every day. It's only for the fact that I've now gone away for three days. Every single day last week, I drove to different barracks and met different groups of soldiers every day. And that trend would have continued if I hadn't just gone away for three days with my family prior to my court case. So there are soldiers across the country who are unhappy. They are, it's like an I'm Spartacus moment. You want to get rid of a young man who's one of them, and this is them standing by their men, standing against the top brass. The top brass who are dictating down these politically correct infrastructure of the military, this diversity, this inclusion, all these, all these agendas that are being pushed through the military. Now, the armed forces are made up of predominantly young, tough, white, working-class men. And they're the men that you're now discriminating against within the armed forces. It's like we've seen, you've all seen, we've seen the police force complete politicised. We've seen the National Health Service. We've seen the fire brigade. We've seen all, but now, now they're trying to do it to our army. They're trying to weaken our army, pussify our army. The, our, our recruitment videos for the British Army this year were a build-up where a man at war gets down he takes his boots off, he washes his feet in the puddle while all the other British soldiers turn around and guard him whilst he's praying on the floor. One of their radio goes and they all say, no, well, wait, wait. It's like, hold on, wait, stop the, stop the bloody war. Mohammed praying, yeah? And, and then, and then the, the Muslim gets up after praying and he says, this is belonging, join the British army. That is the recruitment drive for our army this year. The other, the other video is a man coming out saying how when I came out in the army, it was fine. When I had my boyfriend in the army, it was fine. And then the other ad, but the other ad So they're using the fact that there's political pressure to conform for their leftist brainwashing. Completely. And the rebellion, the, the feeling against it, I think that this, this, this final, this, this was the final straw for a lot of lads. Do you know how many of them are leaving? All of the good lads are leaving. They're all saying, we're fed up, we're going. We're fed up with the army. We're fed up with the political correctness they're enforcing on the army. We fill up the weakness. The we be the best. They don't even want the slogan this year. They want to get rid of be the best. That's what they want to be. If you look at Russia and China's recruitment videos for their army, it's all men firing grenades and shooting each other and explosions and men with eight packs, muscly men. The British recruitment video, pathetic. Well, Inspired. I mean, the Russians literally train shooting each other in armored vests at like 20 feet away, and that's what you're. And meanwhile. Literally, they're training people how to be uh, transvestites in the military, which China executes you for. They're literally training us to collapse. That's basically it. Uh, 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 and what Soldier X has become, it's become so much more now. And it's going to become so much more, I think. Obviously, our soldiers are not allowed a union. They're not allowed a voice. They're not no, allowed great. to speak so, so, so they're just looking for a focal point. And Tommy, that's why I keep telling you. Say whatever you got to say in the court, whatever crap. We know you're a patriot. You're too important now to be out on the street, the things you've done. You're a real leader at the next level. And look, 
myself included. I have to put myself in the field as well. I will tomorrow. But what you're doing is so special and so amazing, and people are looking for your leadership because of your courage. That's what's so special. Let's play a clip that you sent us. It hasn't aired yet, exclusive of what's happening with Soldier X. More's coming tomorrow when Tommy joins us, but here it is. Yeah. You guys have all come here today aware that you could get discharged. Yeah. Why have you come? Everyone's just fed up being treated like it, like you don't matter. Like, then it, everyone just feels like you're just a, a number at the end of the day. Replaceable, right? Like, no, no, no one feels as if they're worth anything anymore. And um, is, that, is that the general? What's the general feeling in camp about about Soldier X? And what is the words going around about the I Am Soldier X campaign? Uh, well, it's, it's unfair for the lad, really, as well, isn't it? He's only a young lad. He probably didn't realise the repercussions of what he'd do anyway. They just saw someone that they recognised jumped on for a picture, and then uh, he's gone massive and higher up. Have just made examples out of him. Can I ask you about morale? Because I've I've been shot. I, I've been on the. So a lot more is coming in the next few days, Soldier X, but imagine saying you can't have the free speech take a photo with Tommy Robinson because the Islamists, they bitch and complain. Tommy? They're pandering to radical jihadists. They're pandering to a group who... They just a few years ago said our mission is to kill British soldiers. Yeah, that's it. Legitimate targets of suicide bombings. They, saw it, they signed a declaration... They signed it, this group, and that's who they're pandering to. Let me and ask you this question, Tommy. There is a backlash forming, and, and I want to be even-handed with it, but can you imagine what happens once the backlash forms, once they push people into a corner? I mean, gut level, what are you seeing 10 years from now? Positive. If we have a positive outcome, people wake up, take action. What happens 10 years from now versus if we go to sleep and lay down 10 years from now? Look, this is the scary thing. I see no outcome for Europe without huge civil unrest. And that's not what we want, but I don't see any salute. The, the minute the first... Well, let's have it on minute, our terms instead of theirs. The minute the first politician gets in power who tries to enforce laws, laws that we already have, but they're not enforced, whether it be against female genital mutilation, whether it be against Sharia, whether it... Any laws that try to limit the spread of Islam, yeah, and, and Islamic teachings, that the Islamic community will rise up. They will riot. They will cause mayhem. They will cause murder. They will cause destruction. And that won't just happen in one European country. It will happen in every European country. And it's at that point. So it's at that point. So why don't we just let them have what they want? Because we always just keep giving in. It's more and more and more. If they want war, then let them start it. It's like. I say it, it, it's absolute dimitude. That's what we're, we're now witnessing by our army. Even our army are now surrendering. To, the boy was told, and, and, and I don't know if you listen. If you listen, I've also got one soldier give us an undercover recording where they recorded their sergeant major. And their sergeant major was saying, who, who said to them, basically said to them, you have no freedom. If you follow Tommy Robinson on Facebook, you leave the army. That's what, that's what, and I've got, there's a recording I've put live of the, their major telling these boys this. So these boys are expected to sign up to our country to go and fight and die for other people's freedoms whilst they have no freedom at all in their own country. And all of it, all of this is due to the top brass in our army wanting to pander and appease radical Sure, it's very simple. Multinational corporations want to take over the world. They want the West to stand down, give in to all this. And it, it's, it's sick. We're going to do one more segment with you when we come back to talk about they've already put you in prison years ago for exposing Islamic sex rings. Now they're trying to put you back in prison. Uh, this is coming up just in two days. We'll talk about it with Tommy Robinson of TommyRobinson.online. We should all be praying for Tommy right now, but I'll tell you this right now. And Tommy was telling me stuff during that last two-minute break that would blow your mind. And see, Tommy is a hero because he is a working class patriot who's on a power trip. And he's now discovering with these generals and, and, and the government people calling him that have a conscience saying, well, Tommy, you're a leader. What should we do? Because they've led their whole lives being followers. They see a real leader that makes them realize what they could have been. So Tommy, we got this segment in the next. I know you're in Europe giving speeches. You got to go. You promised to pop back in the next few days for your court case. 
And we'll talk more about your court case next segment. This little short segment. It's very exciting to hear what you're telling me is happening because I see that myself. And people are just looking for leadership. So we'll get into your court case next segment. They're trying to put you back in prison. But you were saying to me privately, uh, you think the worm's turned. You think the establishment realizes that uh, if we call their bluff, they're done. Which doesn't mean I want to be bravado filled. I want to start something. But like they said at Lexington and Concord, men were not looking to start a war. But if they came to start one, they're going to get one. We just need to be ready is what I'm saying. I think something huge has happened is happening. From the moment I was put in prison, I think that it was a final moment for many people. It become a symbol. It become more about Tommy, more than more than about Tommy Robinson. It was more about all of the people that feel silenced, that feel oppressed, that can see the negative path of our country being taken down. That built a movement. Now with the Soldier X campaign. You've got soldiers. So obviously what they've said is you, you will be disciplined and you will be discharged if you have your photo taken with Tommy Robinson. Well, there are now hundreds of soldiers lining up to take their photo with Tommy Robinson. I've blacked out their identities in a minute. I, I changed their voices. I've got video footage of probably 100 soldiers in the last week. That will continue. And I'll continue to gain more footage and more footage of men that are stepping forward and saying, enough's enough here. You cannot tell us who we can and can't have. Is there a list? They have both no Queen's regulations. Is there a list of names of people that, that our soldiers are not allowed their photographs taken with? I've never been convicted or tried for anything to do with hate speech or anything to do with racism or extremism, ever. So what is the reason why these people can't have their photographs taken? Because you're charismatic and you were right and you exposed the pedophile rings because you're a hero. And because I talk about, yeah, because I talk about Islam and this all comes down to the fear the fear and the, by the government, and not just the fear, what they want to do is they want, they want to make me a pariah. They want to make me untouchable. So they want to send a message to the rest of the country, to the rest of the armed forces. You even talk to him, you'll lose your job. No, exactly. So they, you talk to Tommy, you're destroyed. You come on Alex Jones, you're destroyed. That's what they do. But they didn't rely. They didn't think that the armed services would come out in a revolt against them on this decision. Now, if you... When you see the photos, you need to see a lot of these images that are on my Facebook. Tell us the Facebook. Me... I know your Facebook. Tell us. We're going to come back and show them. Tell us the official Tommy Robinson Facebook. We'll show them right now. Tell us. Yes, yeah, so Tommy. It's the Tommy Robinson fan page. I don't know which. It's, it's the one. It's just got over a million. It's got over a million followers. And if you go onto photos, you'll see all of the photos on there of all the I am Soldier X. American Royal Marines have been holding up signs. I am Soldier X. But you'll see in Britain, you'll, you'll see captains, you'll see senior ranking military, not just the low level, but everyone is holding up basically as a symbol of we're fed up here. We're so fed stay up. there. I'm Let's talk about the chain reaction. There it is. We stand with our lads.com. Stand with our lads.com. Tommy Robinson, when we come back, we're going to show these photos. And this is what the establishment is scared of for 23, 24 years on air. And I remember seeing them like 12 years ago. The things was like this crazy right winger says they're running child sex rings and kidnapping girls. And it all turned out to be true. But there aren't made for TV movies about how he's a hero, how he lost his business, got put in prison to stop tens of thousands of little girls as young as six years old getting kidnapped and gang raped by British men, Muslim men, you name it. No, instead, he spent a year in jail and then three months in jail and almost died this year because he even talked about the child kidnapping rings he exposed. The men that got convicted got less sentences than he did. So in this segment, and if you're a TV viewer, radio listeners, we're describing it. We'll post them on Infowars.com. Here's some of the fan Facebook page showing I am Soldier X, the British military, waking up to this and exploding in, 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 in wanting to do the right thing, understand what's happening. So, Tommy, you've got the floor in the last nine minutes. Lay out where we are historically and what's happening. With, with court or with Soldier X? With court. So I, I, I'm in court on Tuesday where I stand trial at the Old Bailey. I've already spent th nearly three months in prison for this offence. The judge put a reporting restriction. So we have an epidemic in Britain of Muslim men taking non-Muslim children as sexual slaves, abusing them, raping them, torturing them. 
Now, what the government have done and what the judges are doing is they're putting reporting restrictions which say if you report on this case whatsoever, you will breach the Contempt of Court um, Act. That they're saying that that's what I've done by talking about this case. Now, they've just lifted the reporting restrictions this week because the media took them to court to have them removed. They weren't willingly removing them. The media took them to court. The only reason why the media took them to court is because unless those reporting restrictions were removed, they cannot try me. Because for them to try me, everything I will speak about will breach the reporting restrictions. Because let's be clear, what you covered when you went to jail for three months was all of the news already. It, it, it was all, all already in the public domain. So it was all information that had already been on the news and I was just telling the story. Now, what the judge done was put a blanket reporting restriction, which I, I'd say is illegal, which I'm going to tell the old Bailey judge, that is illegal, it's wrong. You are censoring what 60 million people know and understand. Well, let's talk about country. that, because the media puts out these lies and says you have $5 billion you made <laughs> off this when you didn't make 200000 to pay your lawyers. So I've heard of folks that actually saw the documents. But, all, I mean, they're literally demonizing you ahead of this in the news, lying about you. But, but, but I mean, let's talk about... We don't want you to go to prison, Tommy. We want you outside of prison. What they're asking you to do, what's coming up Tuesday? It's coming up Tuesday. I should apologize and I should plead guilty and then I go home. And I'm sorry, I have nothing to apologize for. Um, I cannot plead guilty to telling the truth or speaking any facts. One of the charges the judge has put against me is that I have spoke derogatory terms about Islam. Now, what I will play out in court is that those derogatory terms are factual. You may not like the facts of Islam. You may not like the evidence and the truth about Islam, but it's still the truth. And I'm not going to apologize. But nothing... free speech started in England. I mean, that shows how far we've gone. That It's this God, Islam. we got to bow down to this thing. We live in a post-free speech era. There is no free speech in Britain. As you've seen, even the people who are ready to lay down their life for our freedom are not even allowed to take a photograph with someone without being discharged from their job. We've seen fire, fire, firemen, school teachers all lose their jobs for sharing posts about my freedom. When I was unlawfully, and it's now been proven I was unlawfully put in prison, people who saw the wrong in that and commented on it lost their jobs. You have to understand that all of the problems that are happening in Europe now are coming to America. You have your constitution, which may help you stand up a little longer, but this attack and this erosion of free speech and your rights, we, once you accept that, I've accepted it. We do not have free speech. We're, it's, just a, it's just a facade. It's a, it's a facade. The minute you try to express your free speech, you will have the full weight of the establishment come down upon you. And they will do everything they can to destroy everything about you. Now, I, fa I face court, and what I will do in court, and I'll openly admit, I will use what, I'm, what I think will be a historical moment I think the whole world is watching. Um, I don't think that they should be allowed to ha hide these crimes from the British public any longer. And if they want, and if they wish to re put me in prison or state in these truths, <laughs> I will. I will identify and show people just how this is politically motivated. This is one in 70 years, no journalist ever been sent to prison. The crime that they say and I committed was breaching a reporting restriction. That same weekend. Three other journalists breached the same reporting restriction. <laughs> I have the court transcripts which prove the judge was made aware of these other three journalists. No charges were brought against any of them, just me. And it's not that I have. I've already spent months and months in prison, and now they wish to put me back before the head judge of Britain at the highest court in our land. I am in court for holding an iPhone and telling people and reading information that's already in the public domain on the internet. And I face prison for that. I, I'm going to a court that only usually hears murder trials and terrorism trials. <clears throat> it's unprecedented. So I, I, if I went into court and done anything but tell the truth, I'd have to walk around with my head down for the rest of my life. That's how I feel. So if I do go to prison, then I go to prison knowing that I've told the truth and I've stood true to my conviction. And to be honest, I've called out their bullshit because that's what it is. This is... You are deceiving an entire nation. You are hiding the truth from the general public, the truth which could protect young victims. I care about the victims. I care about the girls. I want to see them stopped more than I care about the perceived, my perceived interpretation or my, my perceived view of the men's religion that was doing it.
So, and, the, and again, what happened on the Friday afternoon when I went to court, I was straight away taken and thrown in prison within five hours. The judge, the same judge, Judge Marson, he heard six weeks of evidence from 18 young children who gave evidence against these men. The judge allowed those men to go home on that Friday afternoon. One of those men packed their suitcases and has now disappeared to Pakistan. He's been sentenced in his absence. So whilst locking me up like I was a danger to society, he allowed a child rapist to go home, pack his suitcase and leave our country. All of those men that I stood outside that court and filmed that day have all been convicted. They are serving 221 years in prison for raping children. But the question I'll ask again is, how and why were those men walking the streets with our children for an extra 12 months whilst they were walking in and out of court on bail? No, that's why right. People have no bail? idea what some of these third world countries are like. These are demon nests. And those of us that stand against it are the bad guys. But at the end of the day, <coughs> The big banks, the big corporations have bet on 1.8 billion Muslims currently, 3 billion by 2030. Uh, they look at the Shai Coms, you know, there's 1.4 billion, it'll be 3 billion. And they just say, we'll bow down. America belongs to Shai Coms. They belong to Islam. So what if Shai Com kills little girls? And, and so what if Islam cuts girls' genitals off? It's liberal. Cut their genitals off. And you just cannot underestimate the magnitude of the sellout against Western civilization. But... I believe the awakening's here, Tommy, and I believe we're going to defeat this. But I salute you, TommyRobinson.online. It's where they can find you. You've got a minute left. Uh, you're, you, you know, you're, you're standing firm. We all admire you. Final comments. Final comments. I'm in Germany now. I'm sitting in Germany now. I've attended a, a demonstration today by tens of thousands of Germans. Um, I've watched when, when I started opposing Islam ten years ago. It was a very lonely place. Now, we've seen a lot of good coming from Europe. We've seen the Italian election, the Austrian election. We've seen the rise in the Swedish Democrat Party. We see the alternative for Deutschland. There is a political revolution brewing in Europe. It's coming. We're on the right side of history. That's right. And Brazil's going nationalist. And here is it's, it's just common sense. Tommy, let me say about here in the break. We salute you. Pray for it. Pray for Tommy Robinson. Pray for InfoWars. I'm still decide to resist and spread those live links. Because that's where all the power and the future and everything is. And we're not just saying, oh, you're important. You are critical. You are central. You are essential. You are everything. But I sit back here talking to Tommy Robinson and the report coming up with Millie Weaver about devil worshipers having public events against Kavanaugh and Trump and myself and others everywhere. And it really just comes down to this. So I'm going to shoot you straight. I'm from Texas. A lot of folks brag they're fifth generation, sixth generation. I'm ninth generation. Not saying that's some title of nobility, because if I hadn't done what I was supposed to do, it wouldn't matter. But, I mean, that really is true. I mean, my family quarterbacked the whole operation with the president of the United States, Andrew Jackson. Texas was not a mistake. And I can tell you I'm quarterbacking operations right now in our own little dimension, aren't we? And I don't say those things to brag and act like I've got bling or I'm here to prove what a Big Mac daddy I am. I'm here to tell those of you that are already tuned in that you're tuned in for a reason because God touched you and this is real. And being chosen, being anointed doesn't mean strawberry fields forever. Doesn't mean some beautiful, perfect future. It means you've pulled the shortest straw. Let me tell you something, though. I've pulled the shortest straw. Maybe we should go out to break in six minutes with Metallica's shortest straw. The shortest straw is pulled for you. Pulled for you. But I want to pull that shortest straw. In my short life, if it means I'm close to God, and it means I'm not a piece of crap. You know, you, you, you heard Tommy, and you heard the big UN invasion. And it's like, wow, I'm on air talking about a UN invasion that's publicly funded by the UN and George Soros, with people using kids as human shields to open migration routes up from Latin America into the U.S., where they grab the people that get here and, and, and induct them into socialism and communism and Alexandra Cortez, Bernie Sanders, Obama, America hating crap. But they all want to get here. We suck so bad, but they want to get here because they want to conquer us.
because we're open and free and loving and altruistic and good compared to other societies. And they see us as weak because we do love. But they've only seen one side of us. But I don't take any pleasure thinking about how we're going to dominate the globalists because they're all jokes. I take pleasure in thinking about you, whether you're black or white or Hispanic or like most people mixed. It doesn't matter. We're all humans who want justice and freedom and recognize that abortion and open borders and disarming patriots and disarming citizens and, and transferring power to far away unnamed world governments. It's like there was a story out Thursday. I never even covered it. Michael Caine, who is an amazing actor, not because he's an actor, but because he's a great soul, came out and said, I'm against leaving Brexit. I want Brexit. I don't know who the EU is. He was being nice. It's Juncker, the Nazi heir. It's a bunch of unelected foreign Chinese banks. And he said, I'd like my country to be run by us. And so all the leftists attacked him and called him all these names. And so that's where we stand. You know, I, I literally, from 5 a.m., prepared for this show. And that's my greatest frustration is that I got up at 3.30 this morning. I couldn't sleep, and I took a shower and drank coffee. And by 5 a.m., I went for a six, seven-mile hike. And then I came back by like 8 a.m. and I made breakfast for my children. And I just sat back and I thought, what do I say? It's like we're under UN invasion. They openly want to destroy the family. They're putting chemicals and vaccines to brain damages. Like, what do I do? I wasn't thinking like, oh, my God, they're censoring me. Oh, my gosh, they're attacking me. What about me, me, me? I was thinking about because I have no future if you don't. I'm thinking, what is my problem? Seriously, I don't say that as some self-deprecating thing. What's wrong with me? Because I know the whole enemy program better than they do. I spent my whole life studying it. I was literally called by God from a little child to like research this. And I don't even know how to stop them. And I don't even know how to respond to something this insane, an anti-human project, when humans could spread through the galaxy. Every liberal video, every thing showed to students is, humans are a curse, don't get off the planet, kill yourselves, death, death, death. What the hell is sending that transmission? The devil. And so I'm here saying, don't kill yourselves, believe in yourselves, have a future, let's talk, let's have a future. And for that, because I love you, they have had millions, millions, because every article they put is syndicated everywhere. And so there's 50,000 newspapers. I mean, just it adds up quickly. Let's just say hundreds of thousands of articles saying I'm this horrible person. And at the end of the day, at 3 a.m., I'm on my knees loving Jesus Christ. And that's why they hate me. And it's not that I'm even that good of a person. It's just that I'm not out to destroy you. And I reject Satan. I completely reject Satan. That's why they want to kill me. Because I see who they are. I know who they are. And most people see that and get scared and like join it because they crap their pants, but not me. Because that's only a small test. What happens if you join it, you lose your soul. So I'm just telling you right now, you've got to decide to not join Satan. And that's why I'm not worried about the lawsuits or the attacks or the lies or people shooting me through full of lead because at the end of the day, I just want God to scoop up what's ever left of me and say, you're with me for eternity. If I could just have that, I would have everything. The devil is real. And he wants to destroy your soul forever because you're made in the image of God and are superior to him.
And I'm asking all of you now to get on your knees to God and repent. You don't have to have all the answers. If you just, God's a free will God. All over the country, since Trump got elected, every week there's national news stories about witches and warlocks and sorcerers. And all these people literally live in basements surrounded by cat boxes and cat urine, imagining how powerful they are, shending out their ooga booga beams, uh, their, their, their sorcery, their abracadabra to stop Trump. Well, if their magic's real, which it isn't, obviously, then it's actually empowering Trump. But our own Millie Weaver was able to go to this mass hexing. Well, she's gone to several of these, and, and we have exclusive video coming up, a boil down of it, and show the true insanity. But here's some of the headlines. Each month, thousands of witches cast spells against Donald Trump. That's a serious article from Vox. You can't control the government, but you can hex it. That's right. Witches cast mass spell against Donald Trump. BBC. Witches of Bushwick. Women for Trump founder says GOP in danger because witches put a hex on Brett Kavanaugh. There's always weak-minded that'll believe it. Brett Kavanaugh. Witches place mass hex on Supreme Court justice during New York protest ritual. You're going to see that coming up. It talks about witches that meet every month and every week to curse the president. They're taking over how Satanists are working to stop Trump and his evangelical supporters. CBN News. Well, no power formed against us shall prosper. These people are losers. You go to a Democrat meeting, though, they are, wear pentagrams, they're hissing, they're yelling, they're, they're, they're roundhouse kicking uh, pro-life uh, women. They're out of control. Millie Weaver, next segment, we're going to play the amazing boil down of all the live reports, hours of it you did in New York. But what do you make of this? Because, I mean, the Democrats don't just have an operating system of hating America now. Most of them you run into, even at events we've had, tell us, we love Satan, F you. We love killing babies. Uh, I mean, these aren't your lovey-dovey people. It seems like abortion, all of it, really is a sacrament for them. Yeah, you know, these were feminist witches that held this ritual to put a hex on both Brett Kavanaugh, President Donald Trump, and one other person. I couldn't really make out the image as to who it was, but they literally had these pin cushion voodoo dolls that they were apparently torturing. And you can see from the exclusive images that were released, uh, actual candles that were shaped like penises, males' genitalia, that had knives stuck all throughout them, uh, essentially to torment and try to torture and put a hex on the patriarchy and men and all rapists and all sexual abusers and Kavanaugh and Trump. You know, this was just a big man-hating festival. And you could just see these feminist witches as they came out from this this event, this hex, and they just looked like really pathetic, sad, lost individuals that have just tried to turn to evil to try to get some kind of um, idea of what they want to have happen, happen. Well, I was about you know, to say, I mean, I've heard, of, I've heard of the devil's rejects. This is like Harry Potter rejects. It looks like the most pathetic, low IQ, Leftist trolls, most of them are probably at admins at Twitter, Facebook, YouTube that are censoring us. We know that. But, I mean, these are really sad people. Yeah, you know, I didn't get the sense that they were just LARPing or trolling. Uh, I got the sense that this was real. These people really do engage in witchcraft. They really do embrace evil. Um, some of them came out saying, Hail Satan, and, you know, we're cursing Jesus and cursing God and getting into it with some of the Christians that were out there trying to pray and preach. And one instance, actually, there was a woman who these preachers were actually exercising around the corner, and they asked us not to film it, and out of respect, we abided. But, you know, it was just a very bizarre event. You know, those who do believe in the spiritual, 
uh, could say that this was an instance of good prevailing over evil because it really did kind of scare off and rout out. Now, one of the interesting things that was happening is they had this big door and you could actually hear them while they were having their ritual screaming and wailing and just these angry, hysterical screams from feminists. And outside the door, you had a bunch of Christians singing songs and praises for God and Jesus. And so there was an actual spirit battle going on out there. It was pretty bizarre to witness. We're going to exclusively premiere all this in, in HD. You, you did live amazing feeds uh, that are linked up on Infowars.com and Newswars.com. We're going to uh, retweet on your account that you still have tonight. You know, some of those so listeners know where to find them and see it for themselves. we got a four-minute boil down. We're going to air on the other side. But you look at the looks in the eyes of these so-called feminists. What they hate is life, the family, themselves. And they look, they have the look of what you see with mental patients and homeless people standing on the side of the street corner. I don't even feel like, like powerful because they're so weak. They are whacked out of their brains. Trump's bringing back prosperity, sovereignty, common sense. Any powerful woman would, would be honored by the powerful male, male presence as well, which empower each other. Uh, but, but when you get into Hillary, who we know is into witchcraft and the occult, and the globalists, they are really in to blaspheming God because they believe that gives them power over this earth. But the, you know, the whole liberal facade of them being loving and good and the high road, I think they're really abandoning that facade, Millie. A, do you agree? And B, why? Well, yeah, I do agree. I think that they preach tolerance, but at the same time, they're actually very intolerant people. They're not very tolerant of Christians, the left. They're not very tolerant of men these days. And these feminist witches were essentially torturing men's genitalia with, with nails and pins in this ritual. So you can't really say that, hey, if there were a bunch of men who gathered in some weird, bizarre ritual and they were poking needles in females' genitalia and female cushions, you might say it's a big woman-hating fest. But when women do it, somehow it's okay and we should just overlook the hatred of the male sex. It's ridiculous. Uh, they're men haters. They essentially vocalize that this is their way of trying to get political justice because the votes just aren't there for them. They can't get the political support. And gee, if they continue down this road, more of these sane, moderate Democrats are going to be walking away. And that's what's happening actually next weekend in D.C. They have the hashtag walk away march, which is supposed to be pretty big. And, you know, it's going to symbolize people walking away from the deranged, Lunatic That's right, Millie, stay there. We're going to come back and, and premiere the amazing HD footage and audio for radio listeners, and we'll describe it for radio listeners, but TV viewers, obviously on TV stations, can see it, and Infowars.com forward slash show. Whatever you do as listeners and viewers, they're trying to censor nationalists, Christians, conservatives, patriots, because we're winning. But you can override big tech by taking the link, Infowars.com forward slash show, and taking the articles on Infowars.com with all the raw video of Millie, and the video she's about to premiere and sending it to people and saying, look at the left engaging in satanic rituals. Look at their craziness. Live, Christians square off with satanic witches hexing Brett Kavanaugh. Now, that said, only did they try to kill innocent until proven guilty in due process with the whole Kavanaugh witch trials. Now, modern witches have adopted the idea of burning people politically at the stake or lynching them in public with a bunch of made-up harpies whose stories turn out to be totally false. New York witches place hex on Brett Kavanaugh. That's right, they met the last two nights in New York City, and our own Millie Weaver was there to cover it. Here is a four-and-a-half-minute boil down, but when we're done with this exclusive, we're going to direct you to where there's hours of the raw footage. Parental discretion is advised for that. We've sanitized this, obviously, for families and viewers. But here is the Democratic Party. They're not just mobs versus jobs. They're devils versus families. We know they love abortion, but we didn't know it was because they had a taste for blood. Here it is. Here is the word of God in the of your darkness. In the midst of your darkness. I'm not here for this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a reminder that you're in support of Donald Trump. And we are simply here to the Lord Jesus Christ. Brad Kavanaugh! I'm not here for Kavanaugh! Brad Kavanaugh! You can think all you want about him. I'm here for your soul.
The level of hate is just people we are psychotic. here in New York where witches at Catlan Books and a cult bookstore are planning to hold a ritual to put a hex on Brett Kavanaugh, the Supreme Court Justice. So there's going to be a lot of people that are just going to be hanging out here, uh, having conversations and participating in this this mass essentially to put a hex on Brett Kavanaugh and the patriarchy. They feel that this tactic is the best approach for them to take in getting their idea of political justice. Are you going to be participating in this event here? Get the f out of here. Okay. Gooch. Fleeting. What you're telling me is that you're gathering for something of a dirt nature. If you would repent and believe the very first things that Jesus of Nazareth said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Let me let you know right now. Yes, your wicked deeds, the wrath of God is abiding upon you even this moment. Oh, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. So this is total delusional bozo the clown world if you're a radio listener we're just showing a bunch of devil worshipers saying they're going to send demons and curses and then with the christians out there protesting it. that makes no sense folks and this is why we have come to inform you if you do not know already that you are indeed I just want to make sure that they don't move all I love of us it. because you're in the way. So they'll let you know. They'll let you know. Folks, again, for radio listeners, it's hard to make out what's going on, but this is the the, 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 the devil-worshipping and cult stuff that's going on. And the, keep rolling the B-roll if you want. And the total nerddom that's going on with the Democrats that are now in a delusional world believing they can call on demons and devils and, and death against Kavanaugh and against President Trump. And it looked like uh, General Kelly was also one of the pictures they had. And then they open up the black door and bring you in like you're powerful. And then, oh, you're so lucky to come in some rat hole place uh, and then, uh, you know, do all this. With all their soup, stupid little, you know, signets and all this black magic stuff they got out of some book that they think gives them power. If you knew anything about this, if you actually believed it, you'd know that if you do those type of rituals, it comes back on you sevenfold. The Bible says... But those real books of black magic, if you believe in that, and I've studied them because I wanted to understand the enemy, it tells you that you've got to do a whole ritual to blame somebody else, and you've got to do all these special rituals in a circle and, and all this stuff, or you're going to get destroyed by the black magic you send at Kavanaugh. Now, I don't believe in that. I have the blood of Christ. I love God. I love justice. I'm not some meth head, you know, devil worshiper. But under their own black magic, under their own... Uh, Babylonian, uh, Jewish, 
uh, Druidic, any of those systems where they have black magic practices, and every culture has them, under every culture, you have to do very special protections and go through it all exactly before you curse somebody or it all comes back on you. So this was basically like people detonating a dirty bomb satanically, if you believe in black magic. They're all just there going, devils, demons, kill, kill people, kill people, murder. We call on demons. We call on death. What the hell do you think you're doing? But that's perfect for Satanism. Because I guarantee you how these sick freaks work. There was somebody up in a building looking down doing a real ritual who was sucking energy out of the, all those idiot leftists who didn't even know what they were part of, which I'm not even saying I believe all that stuff. I'm telling you what those books and what that system's not the Harry Potter crap at Barnes & Noble, but the real devil worship, the real skull and bones, the real Bohemian Grove, the real systems are about. Millie Weaver, Trump came out in a speech yesterday. We played the clip earlier in the show, and he said that the mainstream media lying so much is causing people to go wacko. They are. Now to the point of this, so-called leftists hoping for death against Kavanaugh and Trump and demons and murder and evil, not knowing when you open your soul up and say, I use my divine soul to call upon murder and death. I mean, <laughs> you read about Lady Gaga that's into the occult and someone has to sleep in the room with her. She's so scared. Same thing with Aleister Crowley. Thank God I know the living God, Jesus Christ. Because even if you don't believe in God, the God I love is about love and goodness and happiness. And, I, and I, I'm a strong, good person. I couldn't imagine calling on death and murder. Don't these people have any common sense? Well, I don't think they have much common sense. Uh, it's important to note that Antifa was also out there and they were guarding the witches bookshop, Catland Books. And so they were out there and they had their, their little bandanas over their faces and their symbolisms on them. And some of them were wearing little Aleister Crowley pins. So you could tell that these were satanic Antifa members. And at one point they do chant, you know, they're all Auntie Antifascistas, but I think it was like an Italian version of Antifascistas or something. But essentially, they got into a little bit of a chant off with the Christians, and we're going to get that clip too. It's just we have hours and hours of this stuff. It's really hard to boil down, but we're going to make several highlight clips of just the insanity that went down there. Um, and I will say that our camera guy was able to put his microphone up against the wall and hear a little bit of what was going on inside there during the ritual and said that they were calling on some demonic names. Um, I don't know the names off the top of my head. Uh, it's probably a good thing that, that well, I don't. We know the names. It's loser, loser, Hillary, Obama. Yeah. I mean, th these people are just pathetic and humanity's awake now. We're aware. You should come on to Mara Pastor uh, uh, Brown is going to be on this discussing all this. Millie, great job. We'll continue to follow all this at newswars.com and infowars.com. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alex.